Hey everyone, so in my last video about this new Thrustmaster controller and wheel module, I mentioned towards the end that I wanted to test it out in time trials against a traditional gamepad. So today, that's what we're gonna do. And just to make things a bit more interesting, I'm also going to test it against my full sim rig, and we're gonna be testing two different games here. Of course, Forza Horizon 5, and a full racing sim not meant for controllers, Assetto Corsa. And then, at the end of both tests, I'll give my sort of final verdict about the wheel module. I've now had it with this controller for coming up on a month now, and I feel that's about the amount of time someone should wait to really feel comfortable with new hardware like this. And I have of course already made two other videos with the controller, so check those out if you want to see more of my early experience with it over the last few weeks. And with that, let's talk about this test. We're in Horizon 5, and I'm playing with the wheel module on my eSwap XR Pro while chasing the ghost of a run I did with my Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. Now, I've played every Horizon game with an Xbox controller, and have about 3,000 hours spread across all five games. So it's needless to say that I am very comfortable with this game on a traditional Xbox gamepad. Now the event we're running is one of the new Rivals layouts in the Rally Adventure DLC, and I figured this would be a great driving test because for one, as you can see, it has a lot of elevation, tight corners, double apexes, and tricky braking sections. And two, although I've driven the track a bit during the campaign and in just a bit of multiplayer, I probably have no more than 5 or 10 total runs on it, and have never done it in Rivals, so it's a fairly fresh experience for me. And it also has a pretty clean and not oversaturated Rivals leaderboard, so we can take a good look at how my times would stack up against other people around the world. The car here is the KTM Crossbow GT4, a super lightweight, handling-focused S1 car with about 450 horsepower, which is something I figured, again, would really put the different control methods to the test. When I first drove with this module, I kept things at around A class and below, but now I feel a lot more confident pushing it in faster cars. You also saw this a bit last week with my Dirt Rally gameplay, where I was in a pretty quick Group A Subaru, and as you can see here, pretty much throughout the entire run, I am right on my ghost's tail. I even outpaced it for the first 40 or so seconds of the run here, and managed to finish just a third of a second behind the time I set with an Xbox controller. Now, I think this needs some context for how impressive this is. I have literally 100 times the amount of experience on a normal joystick, and I just got within a third of a second on this module and set a pretty strong time on the leaderboard. Both of these times actually put me in the global top 50, with my controller time at 33rd right now, and the wheel module would put me just behind position 40. Now, this isn't a super populated leaderboard, so you know, the position itself is kind of inflated, but nonetheless, I still think the results here speak for themselves. I only gave myself three attempts here with each controller style, and without a doubt, I could have improved my wheel module time to match the Xbox controller, but I wanted to make sure this was a more realistic test, and I felt that limiting retries makes the test feel more accurate to a real experience with the controller. Now, I did give this a go on the wheel as well, and although I was able to run the track more easily, as I'm really comfortable with the wheel setup, I was, perhaps unsurprisingly, slower than the Xbox controller time, and slower than the Thrustmaster controller with the wheel module. It's no secret that wheels are a bit slower than controllers in Horizon, but it is really cool seeing this module give, you know, some of the benefits you get from a wheel while also being faster. Again, you know, I'm sure with more practice I could bring the wheel time down a bit, along with technically both of my other times, but jumping into a pretty fresh track and essentially doing it live more accurately reflects the differences between these controllers to me. You know, for example, you can technically beat Dark Souls on a Guitar Hero controller with enough practice, patience, and repetition, but that doesn't mean it's a good controller for the game. The more live experience and those earlier hours are more telling to me of how good the controller is, 
and the speed with which I have been able to close the gap on my joystick times here proves a strong point to me that this is more than just a simple gimmick, it really is a viable alternative. I think if I stuck with this controller for even more time, it would be just as fast as a joystick, maybe even faster for me in some areas, because roll steering a joystick is in some cases faster than tap steering in Horizon, and in my eyes, this module is effectively a better way to roll steer. For me, especially on a challenging track like this in a fast car, the only reason it still is slower is because I still just lack that super heavily refined muscle memory I have on a joystick for making those tiny split second corrections in a fast car. I mean, again, for nearly half the run, I outpaced the Xbox controller time, but during that steep downhill right into the double apex left back over a crest into another right, I lost a bit of grip and backed off to play it a bit safer on the wheel module because I'm just not quite able to push it to its absolute limit there in those super technical spots. So I encourage you guys all to try and beat the times I set here on this track, you know, see if you can break into the top 50 or so here, and I've gotta say the competitor in me really wants to go back after this video and try to beat my controller time on the wheel module. So if you do ever see a faster time on this track in S1 than my current Xbox controller record, know that I set it on the wheel module. And now it's time to put this module to its ultimate test, taking it out of its intended purpose and hot lapping Assetto Corsa's Brands Hatch in a rear wheel drive caterum against my sim rig. This is a track and car I am somewhat more familiar with, but haven't driven in quite a while, so I gave myself just a few more laps to adjust to both the sim rig and Thrustmaster wheel module. I ran 5 laps with my wheel, and I gave it 6 with the Thrustmaster controller because I goofed up on my 5th lap and I wanted to give it one more. In my sim rig, of course, the game feels fantastic. This is a pretty tricky car because it's got a lot of weight in the back and a long wheelbase, meaning you really have to manage front grip entering corners and shifting weight smoothly, but it also loves to oversteer if you throw it too hard, so it very much demands proper driving. In the sim rig, I make less mistakes and can correct easily, but it takes me a bit of time to get up to speed. After 5 laps, I managed a time of 150.241. Not bad. Now it's time for the wheel module, and right away I feel quicker than expected, but I'm getting a bit overconfident and making some mistakes going a bit off track, obviously slowing down my overall lap times. After going off track right at the end of lap 5, I decided to give it one more safe, clean run and managed to set a 151.020, just about 3 quarters of a second off my wheel pace. And again, even though it's slower, I think it goes without saying that this is still incredibly impressive. I mean, out of all my time with this module, less than 5 hours is on AC, and I'm within a second of my wheel time on a nearly 2 minute lap. Again, this just clearly shows me that there is potential to this module. Now, you might also be wondering, but Hokey, where is your Xbox controller time? And honestly, I don't even want to show it. I've tried all the settings, I've tried all the scripts and plugins that make it feel like Forza or mimic the console controller settings, and it just isn't that good. My best time was like a 153 something, but I was all over the track. Don't get me wrong, yes, AC is playable on Xbox controllers, I know quite a few people that do it, but especially in a real time attack setting like this, it just isn't that good. And this wheel module is absolutely enough to make that difference to me and make the AC controller experience worth playing. So the final verdict about this wheel module. It's a fun new take on the controller experience that gives you the convenience of a gamepad while also giving you some of the benefits of a wheel. It's obviously quite viable in more arcade or simcade games like Horizon and still manages to impress in full racing sims like Dirt Rally or Assetto Corsa. So if you're looking for something different and this intrigues you, I say go for it and give it some time. Although I was surprised how easily I picked up on the basic mechanics of the module, it did take a while before I started to feel truly confident with it. 
and I still feel fairly early on in the learning curve here. I mean, again, I have thousands of hours on sim wheels and joysticks. This module is still pretty fresh. I don't think it's going to be for everyone or fits every use case. I mean, standard gamepads are still great, but that's kind of the beauty of this controller as a whole anyway, is that you can just swap the modules out and turn it into a standard gamepad. So this controller has absolutely managed to earn its keep for me, and I will be using it more in the future. So thanks everyone for watching my journey with this Horizon 5 Edition eSwap XR Pro controller. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope that it's been helpful and I'll see you all in the next video.